I have some questions from the beginning. How you found our clinic in the internet? Till that moment, you are going to United States mm -hmm. at home and stay for two months, and after that, come back here for the apparatus removal. Okay. So, my first question will be easy. It's uh, um, uh, in what age you understood that you have the bow legs problem? Well, I, I, uh, I think for me, Pavel, um, it was around 14 um, when, you know, kind of when I was coming of age and started noticing my peers more and peer pressure set in. Uh, before that, you know, I, I don't recall ever really thinking about it much, although I may have known that I had bow legs. I was under the illusion maybe that I would grow out of it or that they would still correct. But by 14 I realized that it was a permanent problem and, and it was uh, you know, mentally really starting to, be, to become a challenge. Is it makes you talking, did you talk to your, or like with your relatives regarding that problem or not? Um, I kept it to myself because um, I, was, I was embarrassed. Um, to have a physical flaw because you know I didn't want to mention it to my dad or um, my sister or my mom because they didn't have bow legs and I thought if I mentioned it you know it, I felt subconsciously that it was drawing attention to a negative aspect of myself and I didn't want my family to see me as being weak or thinking that I was flawed mm -hmm. and insecure so it was really personal as far as um, those feelings go and how, how you hold them inside and let them kind of manifest into something negative. I understood it. And uh, for us, so from 14 years old, yes, you have the understanding that you had the bow legs problem. And uh, uh, could you remember the age uh, when you first uh, try to search regarding the bow legs correction? Um, the, the age that I first tried? Um, well, golly, I've, I've been looking for a solution through books and things probably before the invention of the internet. Um, I was unable to ever find anything and I had asked the doctors during regular visits uh, for ch you know checkups or if I was sick and had to go to the doctor. I would ask doctors if they knew of anything and, and you know in America when I asked they said no there's no there's nothing you can do just try to develop the muscles in your legs to try to conceal the gap between your legs um, and so that was really discouraging especially as I was coming into high school that's when I really wanted to do something about it um, and there was no solution at the time and this this was back in the 80s, you know, 1985 to 87. So it wasn't until um, around 2005 mm -hmm. that, so, you know, I waited a long time after hearing there was nothing I could do. Well, by 2005, obviously, we had the internet and I could search the world. Um, and I started doing so probably in 2005 and um, didn't really find anything right off. I don't know what I was trying to search exactly, but it wasn't until two years ago, uh, in 2007, roughly late 2007, that I um, found Dr. Veklich and uh, the Ladiston Clinic here and um, was really, it opened my eyes to the possibilities that there, there may be not only this place that could fix my legs, but others. So it got me searching for uh, potential solutions and locations of doctors and clinics that could maybe help me out. And uh, so I, I was fortunate to be able to find, hey, I'm, I may be able to fix this. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have found information about the clinic in 2007, that's right? Correct. And it takes around uh, two years for you to make the final de decision regarding coming to the clinic. Um, that's right. I. The first year I researched was really um, grappling within myself with the notion that do I really want to do this at my age because I was you know roughly 37 at the time. I lived with it for this duration. I had children, I was married, had you know been established in a career. Um, so it really 
was something that I thought, do I need to do this? Or can I, you know, live my life with the insecurity that I've felt for so long, although over time it had become muted because I'd lived with it so long. But finding a solution kind of brought it back to the surface so that, you know, not that it made me more insecure, but knowing that there was something I could do about this, uh, deformity, you know, genuinely as a deformity, and I never looked at it as a deformity so much as a flaw, which mm -hmm. is, a, you know, but to really admit to myself that I have a deformity um, just got me thinking that maybe I could really do this, and so the first year was a battle within myself to say, do I want to do this, and if so, who do I want? to mm -hmm. perform this, who do I feel comfortable with based on repeatedly going to the website, seeing the other patients before and after pictures, things of that nature, trying to convince myself that a trip perhaps to the Ukraine or elsewhere would be a good, a good thing. Uh, do you know about Ukraine something before? I mean, some information because this country is far away from the United States. Well, um, I, I knew really nothing about the current Ukraine. Because growing up, you know, we knew of the, the former Soviet Union uh -huh. and things of that nature and the ties with the Ukraine and, and Russia. And so I felt like I needed to get a little education on the current state of affairs in your country. Um, and so I, I did some investigating the best I could, which there's a plethora of information online, but what I found is that um, with, although I hadn't learned the language and I hadn't understood the depths of the current politics, what I did understand is that things are quite different over here and uh, very modern uh, compared to, you know, back in the early so Union. Union. So, yes, Soviet Union. So um, that, that was very comforting. And the fact that the website was very uh, comprehensive um, and did a good job of allowing someone like myself from a different country to understand that other people come here and have been coming here for years and that Dr. Veklich has years and years worth of experience and hundreds of uh, successfully treated patients. So with that knowledge, you know, I was getting closer to uh, finding a comfort level to make the decision to do the to come here and have the procedure. So you choose uh, <clears throat> you can contact with with Pavel Corson manager, yes, and after that choose the regular date for your uh, arrival in Ukraine. Uh, do you worry it before you arrive here regularly in the meeting and everything? Have you feel yourself stressful a bit before? Um, not so much. I mean, not as stressful as I thought it would be because um, with, with the help of the manager and the correspondence we had online and the good communication, um, I felt that when I arrived in the Ukraine that I would have the liaison to get me to the clinic uh, in, a, in a fashion that was, uh, was able to make it smooth because I didn't speak the language over here. Mm -hmm. So um, really the language barrier was, was more of a concern from a stress factor, but um, Pavel, you know, m met me at the airport and uh, made it very nice uh, uh, and very quick. I mean, the whole trip here from the U.S. to the Ukraine was one of the smoothest trips, um, ha having not been a true international traveler, you know, I've been other places, uh, islands and things like that, but to travel this far away I've never done.